Hey, so today we're gonna take these uh, Microforce holders and we're gonna take off this rosette and replace it with an airy rosette. We're gonna do it because uh, Charm City thinks this is a better plan and I don't blame them. Take out the bolts. This little thumb screw there has a little spacer in there to lock it, so I'm gonna have to hammer that out. There we go. Pop that pin out. That's the pin. The little guy came from out of there. Handed operation. Pop! Comes right off. There's that. And then. Alright, now we get to go over to Blowtorch. Alright, we got safety glasses, a big vise, we got our part, lighter, we got our blowtorch. We gotta heat up this part to break the adhesive that's holding it to the part beneath it. A little bit of a hammer. Ooh, it's wiggling. Boom. This is the old rosette. It's got two little locating pins, two bolts. Now it's a lost cause. So, and it's several hundred degrees. We'll put it over here with his brother. Boom. They can think about their life. All right, we got our part right here. We got our vise. We got a bridge port. Good. I got him uh, chucked up on some parallels. We're gonna need a tiny hammer. Let me give him a couple taps. Because you want that part to be square with uh, the table. Over here. That's the area rosette. Unlike uh, the other kind, this one has a square locating feature. So I have a program that's going to mill a little square uh, right there, but first I have to locate it. It's a number two Morse taper uh, dead center and a number two Morse taper collet adapter uh, to a R8 taper bridge port hole. That's pretty centered. There we go. It's an R8 to Morse 2. Goes there. This goes there. A quarter inch end mill. That's what the program calls for. Let's get that wrench doing its job. Back gears come out. All right, let's uh, load up the program. See, it's gonna make a slot. Now it's long like this because you can't go into the corners with an end mill, right? They're round. So if you need to make a square hole to accommodate a square feature, you gotta go beyond it a little bit. So it'll only be indexed on the sides, but that should be fine. We're not uh, building rocket parts to uh, go to the moon with, and even if we were, it would probably be okay. All right, now we're going to kick on our spindle on with the good old VFD. We're going to engage our safety glasses. We'll give it a couple blasts just because, good measure because it's a little tiny tool, and little tiny tools tend to heat up more, which makes total sense with physics, because if you're trying to do a lot of work with a small surface. That's not mine. I'm not using this surface. I'm trying to extend that work with a large surface. Physics, man. Where is it? Where is it? Coffee. Hmm. Good. Coffee goes there. the y-axis control, it's the x-axis control, that's the z-axis control, that's the computer control box. I built that thing out of an old uh, uh, G5 enclosure because it's just solid aluminum and it's really good at heat management and motor controllers, especially stepper motor controllers, which is what I'm using here, tend to produce an awful lot of heat. That way the garage doesn't burn down. I don't think she's done already. Are you done already? Maybe she is. See that feature? Doesn't that look like the thing that was on the picture? I think it's probably going deeper than it really needs to. 
Let's do some measuring. So there's the new rosette, right? There's the feature that it has to accommodate, that square. Calipers, 0.155-ish. All right, so now we're at minus 0.2 inches. So 200 thou, and I think that's where I said to put it, which is obviously more than 155 thou, which is what this measures out to, um, but it's probably more than I need. Okay, she's done. Program's uh, done. Let's uh, cut the power to the spindle. We're gonna take out our uh, quarter end mill. That's a quarter inch end mill. We're gonna add in our drill chuck. I don't remember, I think it's a 330 seconds because we have to tap um, 440. I'm looking at my list, that's all my taps. 440 is 330 seconds, that was right. All right, so let's get our 330 seconds uh, drill bit in there, and then we're gonna put it in the chuck, and we're gonna make a couple holes to uh, bolt the new rosette in place. We're chucked up. We're uh, gonna disengage our back gear so that, oh, wait a minute. Ah, we're good, okay, there we go. All right, so now that our square hole is milled, we got to uh, uh, land some holes 0.79 inches apart. That's uh, 20 millimeters for you communists. And uh, we're going to start at zero, 00 for our position. Start angle is 45 degrees off of zero. This way, that's zero. So 45 degrees down, it's going to be our first hole. So if you can see, it's going to be at right there. Like 4 o'clock, 4.30. I think it's 4.30. And then the next one's going to be up here at 10.30. Postcode, save settings, postcode, save settings, exit. All right. And first hole's there, second hole's there. That makes perfect sense to me. And I'm going to hit the go button on the machine. And because it's a really tiny little, little, little drill, I'm going to crank my speed up to 150 hertz, which is what I have set to the maximum. That way it spins faster. You can imagine you need to spin a small tool faster because, uh, well, I'll tell you later. All right, here we go. That's wrong. See how wrong it is? So if any of you astute viewers were noticing, I did that dead wrong, but uh, I didn't make the hole yet, so I stopped it before it went in the wrong direction. Um, I'll show you. See, any smart person without dyslexia would have been able to tell me that 430 on here and 1030 are not 45 degrees. It's 135 degrees, and that line, which is what I wanted, is different from that line, which is the line I showed you a minute ago. So let's uh, fix our mistake and try again without screwing it up. Ready? Go. There we go. That's a reasonable speed. It's probably slower than I need, but... I don't want to break this drill bit. It's a really little drill bit and it's uh, fragile and nothing is more of a pain in the butt than breaking like one little tiny fragile drill bit in a set and then ruining your set. It's raining. So let's take a look at this part so far. There, there, eh, focus, jerk. Come on, buddy. All right, so we have a slot cut out to accommodate that one part. We have two, bolt, uh, two holes that are gonna be tapped to seven, I'm sorry, to four, 40. And somewhere around here is the, there it is. All right, so that part goes here. So let's see how well, it might require a little bit of filing if, but it should be a pretty snug fit. You can probably get that in there by pressing it in, which is actually preferred because it'll really hold firm. So I'm gonna tap these holes and then uh, clean it up, soap and water, and uh, bolt that guy in place. And then we can be happy.
Here we are. We're chucked up. Meow. I need that one and that one. This is a uh, tapered tap, so it's self-centering, which is nice, especially on a small tap, because if you don't get them perfectly centered on a small tap, you're gonna break your tap. That's how it is. Here we go. Tap wrench, little baby tap. And nice and slow. Oh yeah, look at that. See those threads? Perfect. Love it. Let's uh, clean that part off and we'll see how, um, how good of a fit that is. Alright, moment of truth. We're going to uh, take that new one, that old part, one, two. Let's see if we can press those together. I'm just going to give it a light squeeze. And by light, I mean, you know, half a ton. I got this vise from a machine shop liquidation, like most things come from these days, and it was the only one on a shelf full of vices, and it was the only one with soft, soft jaws, and um, I walk in and the guy who's running the thing is like, I'm like, can I get a vise? He's like, yeah, sure. Uh, and I walked right up to this one, it was the only one with soft jaws, and uh, it wasn't the newest, it wasn't the biggest, and it wasn't the prettiest, and I reached for it and the guy looks at me and he's like, you've chosen wisely. It's like, yeah. There. It appears that I've come in a little crooked, but I think I can tap it into place. The holes I made aren't quite lining up. It's a little bit off of where it's supposed to be. Should have put an indexing rod in there or something. We'll do that on the next one. With a little light hammer action. Phone's sitting on the hammer. Oh, it's working great. Here, you guys want to see this. It's there we go, you can see that. All right, and there's a little bit of light tamer, hammer action. Goes right where it's supposed to should. But damn, perfect. All right, that's one. Oh no, Martin, I'm all out. But that's enough to get them together. Put a drop of Loctite in each of those screw holes and it'll be there forever and it'll be perfect. Let's get the other one and then we're done. All right, so we got a finished product. There. All right, so you can see that's a much handsomer rosette than the one that was on there before. I'm looking at these old rosettes and it looks like they're actually a cast part and not a machined part, which really would surprise me, but the finish on them really looks like they were cast, or maybe pressed, maybe pressed by a die. Uh, but these new ones are definitely machined. Um, so they're much higher quality, and I like them a lot better. Um, so these are gonna go head over to Charm Cine, and uh, if you are lucky enough to use a Microforce that Charm Cine gave you, it'll likely come with one of these fancy handles that will be a much more convenient way to attach and detach the Microforce as you want your zoom lens to ride. Bye guys.